Okay, Darren here, subject of the day, microfiber, what I call the ninth wonder of the world. I think I refer to the magic eraser uh, from Mr. Clean as the eighth wonder of the world. Microfiber is the ninth wonder of the world. Why? Because it is an amazing textile. So, what is a textile? Well, officially, a textile means a woven piece of cloth or fabric. This probably isn't woven. It's but I just refer to it as a textile, a piece of cloth. So, before I get into it, and I've got my notes, because this is like every other subject of detailing, and that's the misnomer, detailing made simple. I really should say detailing made simpler, because every subject bleeds into so many areas naturally. And in order to understand this one very specific topic, you have to understand other topics in order for complete understanding and then of course that topic itself ripples in the other areas like microfiber okay why do you use it Darren why is it the preferred method how do you take care of them how do you wash them how do you dry them so there's many questions so with that said I'm gonna take a little sidebar and thank a couple people first off this video is yes Chris Garcia which I believe is from Murrieta because he asked specifically about my lineup of microfibers and he noticed the different colors and I've mentioned it in my videos before how they are color coded. There's a reason I do that. But also, yes, Russell Johnson, thank you so much. Uh, as I say in my videos, there are kings. Communication is king, presentation is king, value is king. Well, one of the kings is the messenger. Okay, you've got the message and then you've got the messenger. Well, Russell, sorry, I had to verify. I, I'm, I'm guessing you go with Russ. So Russ became the messenger of a message that I've heard before, which is, Darren, you need to kind of focus in a little tighter, cut to the chase, that type of stuff. So that's where I'm learning, and somehow it just hit home. So with that said is that microfibers themselves, and I wanted to make sure to give credit to Russ, because I really appreciate all your guys' comments and questions because it's stuff that I would not think of naturally because I've been in the business so long that I uh, forget what it's like to be a beginner and forget what it's like to try to jump in and make that leap of faith into the world of professional detailing. And I think, Phil, you asked, how, at what point did it, do you get to call yourself a professional detailer? Well, the second you get paid for a job, you officially can call yourself a professional. It's as simple as that. There is no uh, true um, license or anything else that will make you a professional. But officially, once you're paid to do something, professional status. How about that? So microfiber, complex subject because there's so many variables. Why do I consider it the ninth one of the world? Because in relation to this cloth, which is how I did a lot of my detailing, and I don't mean paint work, because if you go back to the 80s, which is another, uh, I don't remember who it was, asked to do a comparison between the 80s and when I started out, which was the late 80s, as compared to now. Well, microfiber is one of them. They didn't have microfiber back in the 80s. We had terry cloth and we had baby diapers. Baby diapers reigned supreme. They were the, the ultimate as far as smooth and you would use nothing but a baby diaper on your car paint. Well, those days are gone. Throw out that old thinking, that old wisdom. Embrace new uh, technology, which is microfibers. Okay, so this is not meant to be a comprehensive video. I'm going to dissect this into little segments, but with in... in uh, regards to Chris, I want to make sure I address the issue. Specifically, you'll notice that I have different colors of microfibers. There's a reason they're color-coded or why I choose different colors. Part of that is organization. And I can identify very quickly in any instant, whether it's on the shelf or in my van, in the wash machine, in the dryer, it's like, okay, this towel is to be folded this way due to its size and due to where I have it organized in my van. This towel, due to the color, is used for these 
tasks only because I don't want to commingle chemicals and so forth. Because just because you wash a cloth doesn't mean that all the chemicals come out 100%. So here's my big tip for the day, which is these. Guess where I get these? I get them at Costco. I'm sure all of you have either heard of Costco or have one very close to you. Well, guess what? This is probably what I use for 80% of the work. And while, see there's three levels. There's brand new or virgin, which I keep in a plastic bag. Even in my van, I keep in a plastic bag. Why? Because I want to protect them as much as possible from any wandering debris or dust because I use these only the most on the most pristine of cars especially black cars when I'm waxing or taking off the wax so this is level one this is level two and this is level three so as I use these they're so cheap by the way I think you get like 24 and now they cost like 14 bucks for a bundle now, is this the most superior microfiber cloth on the market? No, it's not. But it depends on what you mean by superior anyways, because they come in so many configurations from ultra, ultra fine, like this one, which has like zero nap to it. It's very thin, very tightly woven. This is the type of uh, microfiber you're going to get, get, you're going to get with your sunglasses. And then you've got this ultra thick plush microfiber. So once again, it's hard to do an apples for apples comparison when you talk about which is better. Well, you define better or the metrics in which we define better and then I'll be able to help you define which is the better choice. How about that? So it's, it's an area where I personally do not need to overthink because these microfibers are at a level that is acceptable and actually above acceptability because I know who I'm dealing with despite customers of affluence or more money than they know what to do with does not make them an expert or does not mean that they have a trained eye to decipher or um, discern the difference between paint that's been polished to level 10 or level 8. Most of them really don't know yeah, they can walk up to a car and say, wow, Darren, that looks amazing. That looks so shiny. I can't believe it. But do they know what swirl marks are? Do they know what spider webbing is? Do they know what holograms are? Most of them don't. But they know what shiny paint looks like as they walk to and from their car. So I don't need to overthink it. They're almost disposable. I do not use them and dispose of them, of them though. I rotate them. So once they go from virgin state on the most pristine cars, then I graduate them to level two, which is for light colored cars, and they have to pass the test. So when I'm washing and folding them, I visually inspect them. Before I use them, I visually inspect them. You know why? Because that's one of the few uh, trade-offs of microfiber is because they are, um, there's so many fibers, I mean hundreds of thousands of little fibers, it's so fine that they will, that the, anything that touches them, debris, like, uh, you know, tangible material that's unwanted, debris, dirt, whatever, it sticks to it, it clings to it for its very life and it's hard to remove it. So you have to take special care in washing and cleaning these and just using them. That's why I do a visual inspection on them each time before I use them. They hold on to every piece of lint. You have to wash them separately. For example, if I was to wash these two cloths together, this cloth would come out of the wash machine full of all the lint that sheds from this cloth. You'll notice in your if you dry these separately that your lint uh, screen that you pull out that you have to empty each time you dry will be virtually empty because they just don't shed almost they do shed eventually and they start breaking down and that gets me into uh, another part of the equation which is washing 
or the care of these. Now officially, they're supposed to be washed in cold, detergent only, don't add anything else, and then dried, air, or tumble dried, which means no heat. Do I do that? No, because I don't overthink it any further. Because I know that I'm going to reach for a virgin microfiber when it comes down to a car that's that critical or in that perfect or pristine condition where it really will matter. The second you wash these, they start breaking down. So if I was to try or to attempt to use this one, this particular uh, level two uh, microfiber on a pristine black car that had a flawless paint finish, it would leave ultra micro, <laughs> pun intended, fibers attached to the car because as you rub, you're always going to generate some form of static electricity and these little fibers will stick to the paint and because it's black or dark, it will show and it will frustrate you to no end. So therefore, I reach for a virgin one that is undefiled by daily use. So officially, and I'm gonna show you a page on a website, autogeek.net, because you can shop endlessly for all different types of microfibers. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because on their site, which you can access through my site, thank you very much, it will give you more information than I need to try to rephrase and regurgitate on my own site. So there's different types of grades. Yes, do I spend money on some higher end microfibers? Yes. Like these are like, I don't know, they were close to 10 bucks a piece. But they're also very big. And that's another thing about microfibers or anything else. Bigger is not always better. Okay, so depending upon how you're using these, you may think like they'll talk about oversized microfiber and you think you're getting more for your money. Well, yeah, you're getting more for your money, but once again, more is not always better. Okay, more sometimes is just more. So what happens, and that's the ripple effect or the unseen consequences as it's called, is that let's say you get this wet and you're using this to actually dry, a, a, a um, sorry, you're actually using it to dry your car off, which is one of the things I recommend is you either pick a synthetic chamois or a microfiber to dry your car off if you're washing it in a traditional method. It becomes so cumbersome to work with and so heavy that you're, you're like gonna pull a muscle because it's weighted down with so much water that you realize, wow, this sucks. It's too big to actually use. So therefore, I go with something smaller and lighter. So sometimes more is just that, it's just more. You have to respond accordingly and that's why I pick different pile heights or thicknesses and different sizes. So this one I will use as like a, an, an initial wipe down on a car that I know I'm going to have to clay and polish anyways so I'm far less concerned about scratches because I'm already gonna have to fix those scratches anyways. So I pick a plush one. That's what that one's for. These blue ones are thinner and that's for a final wipe down. Um, these red ones are for chrome wheels or wheels in general after they've been cleaned. I don't want to soil these up. If I'm going to do some heavy lifting or dirty work I'm going to use these level three microfibers that have already been through the ringer, literally, and what I mean by that is out in the working world and through the wash machine many, many times. But you'll notice that it still looks presentable. Once a microfiber becomes so soiled that it even looks dirty when it's clean, that's when I save it for the truly dirty of dirty work. What, maybe I have to re, uh, clean out a wheel well just in the moment and it's just saturated with old dressing or like some actual heavy grease. Then I'll pull out a real bad microfiber or I pull out a terry cloth towel that truly is disposable because these are even cheaper and they shed so much lint, I hate using them. I used to use these to clean the interior of cars now that's also a ripple effect of microfibers. If you use them on the interior of the car, 
They are superior and it is what I use, but if you're used to the feel of a terry cloth towel, it will feel differently because these will grab and you won't be able to slide them across the carpeting very easily or on the leather, it will, it will grab, it will not slide like these will, except these leave lint, they're not as, a, as absorbent and well, I'm gonna use a little demonstration here to demonstrate the difference between a microfiber and what would be an extreme case. Okay, here's my little prop moment of the day. Pretend this rake, I'm raking stuff off the ground. Let's say this was a handheld rake and I'm trying to rake dirt off of my floor mat and I'm using this rake, how effective would I be? Well, of course I could get the big chunks, right? But you can see through all the gaps that I'm only gonna be able to get the big chunks. Well, microfiber is similar to that in relation to this brush. Now let's say I take this brush that literally has hundreds of bristles on it compared to the, I don't know, maybe uh, 12 uh, bristles, if you wanna call these little fingers bristles, so which would be more effective at uh, brushing up dirt? Okay, the obvious answer is over here, okay? So the same is with microfiber in relation or comparison to this, is the fibers are few and far in between compared to the hundred and thousand fibers contained in a microfiber. That's why it's far superior in cleaning and they do not shed lint like this. Literally, if you shampoo and clean leather or carpeting or cloth or velour with one of these, you will have to clean up after yourself so you're, you're, you're uh, wasting time. You're being less efficient. You may be as effective, but you're being less efficient. And efficiency equates to money because time is money. So you want to cut to the chase. So once again, microfiber is the winning cloth, hands down. There is some nuances to it, like the care and handling of it that can be problematic, and also the way it feels if you're used to something like this. Those are the only drawbacks that I can think of when choosing a microfiber. Uh, also the colors, as I addressed that earlier, each color is a representation of what chore or task of the detailing process it is designated for. When I'm training guys, it's also, unless they're colorblind, that represents a problem, but haven't ran into that uh, firsthand so far. But see, with color, you can instantly identify. So I can tell a guy, it's like, hey, uh, Darren, what do you want me to do next? It's like, okay, I want you to go those chrome wheels have been cleaned. They've been wiped up. There's no big water spots. Now I want you to take them to 100%. Go grab a red microfiber cloth and some window cleaner and do it. Okay, well he knows the window cleaner because it'll say window cleaner on the bottle and it's blue and he knows red microfiber. So bam, done. I don't have to walk over there and show it to him. I just say red microfiber, window cleaner, finish the wheels 100%. Then I can go check his wheel when he's done, make sure he got it, but it saves time in the training process. So it's all about a very systematic approach. It's kind of like the McDonald's. You know, how do you make a hamburger? Well, you flip the patty on a heated grill for 30 seconds on one side, you flip it over 30 seconds, one squirt of, squirt of ketchup, one squirt of mustard, two pickles, one thing of cheese if it gets cheese. There's no thinking involved. It's just systematic approach that can be duplicated over and over and over. It's how do you become more profitable as a business owner. And that's my big unique value proposition is I don't want to be the biggest. I want to be the most profitable. Therein lies the rub. Therein lies the big tipping point between me and other detailers is who is really turning a profit. Because as much as I love cars, guess what? I love profit even more because I can tool on my own cars all day long. I work because I got to. Do I enjoy what I do? Yeah, I actually love it. 
but it's still hard work. It's called work for a reason because it's work. But I want to be profitable. So if I'm going to do it anyways, why not figure out how to be as profitable as possible and as smart as possible, working smart, which is another question that uh, I was going to get at with you. Uh, sorry, I keep forgetting. I got so much on the hard drive. Russ, sorry, is, and I'm going to make a separate video on this. Um, so hang tight to that thought. Anyhow, so let me just figure out, um, okay, next step is I'm going to take you over my shoulder, I'm going to show you this AutoGeek page because, like I said, if you want to keep it simple, go to Costco. Okay, this is me actually talking you out of buying stuff uh, through the system that I get actually get paid for. And I do the same thing with my customers. I'm just going to be upfront and honest. I'm going to show you what I do professionally and personally, whether it benefits me or not. Because I know ultimately, the more I give you what you want, which is tips and information, how to be profitable, how to start your own business, I know it's going to come back to me eventually. It may not be tomorrow, but it will come back. And I take the same approach with my customers. And people are really perplexed by it because they're not used to that direct, candid approach. And I'm telling you, and I'm going to make a separate video about it, and I'm telling you that it has paid me huge dividends where it actually, it's a weird psychology, a weird phenomenon. It's that push-pull that I talk about with my own kids and wife. It's like the more you grab for something and you force something, the more a person's going to repel. So when I, and it's, and, it's, and it's part of the equation of business of supply and demand. When you lower the supply, demand goes up and price goes up. When you increase the supply, demand goes down and price goes down. So it's that push-pull. So what I do with my customers is I actually, through communication, King, is I actually pull back and it gets them to want more of Darren, more of auto fetish. And it's a strange phenomenon. I'll actually try to talk people out of business. Uh, and the ripple effect is that I ensure that I get their business, whatever business that is, and I actually get the more profitable business. So that's the big irony, and that's what I can teach you guys is how to be profitable. And here I am digressing again. So, but I covered the microfiber. Um, so if that's all you're here for, then fine. But if in all my videos, I'm going, I can't help myself, sorry. I'm always going to uh, fly off the radar and start talking about things that hopefully are relevant to you guys that want to learn and want to grow your business, want to get in the business, and most importantly, how do you be more profitable than the next guy? How do you make a full-time living doing part-time work? Because that's what I do, literally part-time physically doing it. Now, yes, I'll put in 16-hour days, including the computer time, but part-time and still make a full-time living. That is about being effective, efficient, which means profitability. So let's go to my computer and I'm going to show you how it works. And so you can do some additional research if you want and buy to your heart's content on the microfibers that you you that you decide to choose. Um, before we cut to that, let me, as time is running out, these are my different drawers in my van. Uh, this is a used uh, cloth because I know I can reuse it, but here's my window cloths. Here's my red, my blue. Here's my different types of microfibers. Here's my virgin microfibers. Here's my extra plush cloth. So the organization does not stop in my garage. It continues in my van, a very systematic approach. Okay, here we are, my website. Yes, there's a picture of me. So on every page, this is the home page, and just as a brief uh, overview of how my site works, over here is the navigation column. It's got all these uh, headings for areas of um, specific areas from best buffers, the best polishers, car polish, so on and so forth. There's my must-haves, my list of you must have because they're that good. 
over on the right is banners for autogeek.net okay on every page on virtually every page if you just click on one of these links you can see my cursor my little hand icon the mouse that's controlled by the mouse that's right there so once I click this it opens up a new page this will take you to autogeek.net over here they have their search auto geek find it so you can enter a search term in this little space here and find it or just like my website their navigation column is over here on the left now if you go down to right here and when you hover your mouse over their links it actually turns yellow so microfiber products I click on that and now we have all these resources learn about microfiber how to care for microfiber microfiber comparison chart this is all very good information so for example I'm clicking on learn about microfiber it'll talk about get the scoop on the loop what is denier how durable is microfiber so on and so forth more information than most guys know and then it goes down into a microfiber comparison chart um, let's see what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is use the back button and let's see if that comparison chart okay it is a little different this is a little more comprehensive because it shows you it shows you the picture of the microfiber it shows you how big it is and remember I said sometimes a big is just big it's just more so more is not always better more sometimes is just more of so you have to and and part of this will come from experience you know and based on what you're trying to accomplish so I also pick and color code my microfibers you may choose a different system for example uh, as the darker or the grimier the work is I generally go with a darker colored microfiber because as it goes through the wash machine like this black one it's going to hide the dirt that may be stained in the process of using it so that's also one thing and then there's just some common things like blue tends to be associated with window cleaners even though I use green personally so you'll come up with your own little system point is is here on autogeek.net there is lots of useful information how to care for your microfiber they have special um, uh, detergents formulated specifically to wash your microfibers in is it a requirement no is it better yes so there's good better and best so definitely it's better but it's not a requirement so point is is always go to my website there will always be a link in the description box from every page for example, I can click on any one of these pages. So let's go to my must-haves page. Auto detailing supplies, Darren's list of must-haves. So you can see I'm falling behind on my uh, maintenance with my website because there's only four products here, but I talk about them so frequently, it's important. Notice that we have the Auto Geek banner over here on the right. This is how you subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel also is right here and I also have a custom Google search box right here that you can use also to search my website for specific uh, topics so let's say I click on super degreaser it'll take me there now down here is a link so if I click on this picture or this uh, link right here it's going to open another page directly to Auto Geeks page for Super Degreaser. It costs, well, as of right now, $16.99 normally, and I actually pay $19.99 myself. So today would be a good day to buy it. Uh, anyhow, so once you do that, I get a little bit of commission. So once again, thank you in advance.